recording. And good morning, everyone. The time is now 9.55 a.m. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone, hope they had a wonderful Passover, Easter, and everything else that came with it. Hope everyone enjoy their holiday. As some of you are coming in, we ask you to please mute your microphones once you come in. You're saying, I did or you didn't realize, but you need to really make sure your microphones are muted because some of your words can be duty noted in. So we're going to remind you to please be very, very, please be very careful what you're saying in any meeting, especially you don't want to have to hear languages because it could be going the wrong way. First of all, I do want to welcome everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Before I do our regular business, I have to remind everyone the housekeeping rules that has to go in at this time. First of all, everyone should be muted, so therefore no one can interrupt the system. As I'm speaking right now, giving you guys the housekeeping rules. Unless you cannot hear me, that will be Brian or Deborah who is reminding me that because they are the chairs. Uh, Brian is the vice chair of the Brooklyn DD Council, and Deborah is the chair of the Brooklyn Advisory Council and the secretary of the DD Council and the co-chair of the provider information. Whew, that's a lot of oxygen. But as we remind you, everyone, housekeeping rules is very important. As some of you have your microphones on, I thank you who have their microphones on and muted. But I'd like to remind you, some of you might have a little trouble as you just saw the yellow line. That is the information center. It looks like a small I, lowercase I with a circle. That's where you can link your phone if you want to. So in case you don't want to use the microphone, you can use the phone. Now I'll remind you, some of your phones do have mute buttons. So we do remind you to please do that. It is very important. So therefore we can get everyone in. So there's no echo or no one can hear your conversation outside the system. So therefore we give a little courtesy to that. And if you're on the computer, micro microphones are very easy to go on. It's right on top, and it does give you the option of the microphone or the headset, which I'm wearing mine's right now. So please make sure that you're doing that as well. Also, to remind everyone, the order, the join order button, which is right there. Once you click on it, you can choose the microphone or the headset, as I mentioned. And as a remind you, if anyone needs caption. Please let me know on the chat as soon as possible, but it, it is on. You can turn it on if you need it at this time. And I'm glad everyone's please putting their name and information in. You can always put your announcements in at the same time. As we remind you, once you see this word questions, please raise your hand. Your name will be called or please put your comments into the chat to make sure everyone sees your comment. So therefore, if IAC, if you have a question for IAC, they can read the question as well, OPWDD, Brian, Joyce, Deborah, or me, we can all read the questions. Some questions, some people like to ask their questions privately, so we all will, I will be checking that out today. So we remind you all to please um, have the courtesy if people have questions, we do switch back and forth with the hand raise and the questions. Want to make that very clear to everyone. As our numbers are growing, the numbers is not correct. We have a lot. We have a lot of people on, so I have to remind everyone. Please give courtesy to everyone, to every single one. And it reminds you right now, as some of you are coming in, we remind you to please make sure your microphone is muted so quickly, so therefore no echo, no personal business. So as we remind you, if you see this sign with the hand raised, it will be everywhere once the speaker is finished. Before I proceed, I do need, uh, as a reminder, before we make a motion, I do want to remind everyone the minutes is called a summary minutes, and there is a recording minutes. All the minutes are always available, A, in our website. B was sent out on email and some of your emails people if it comes back means you did not send me an email or the email you have may change or upgrade as a reminder as an optional you can always visit our website the link is in the bottom and the minutes are there until I change the minutes as well as the PowerPoint that we have from last month so please make that note that all that information is on our website at this time, I need someone to please make a motion for the for the minutes and the recording minutes. Uh, 
for last month of March. Hi, Deborah Gray, Chair of the Advisory, make the make the motion to accept the minutes. Thank you. I need a second. Raise hand second. Okay. Sorry, Brian. And beat you to it. <laughs> uh, you need a good laugh anyway. Thank you, Ann. So the minutes are now passed. And I remind you, as you see, the link is there. It is available on our website. Uh, as I remind you, this is our gen. Well, sorry if the screen's a little behind. There we go. Uh, this is our agenda right now. Since Deborah has to leave because she will explain in a few minutes, but Deborah will explain um, at this time what's been going on, and Brian, then Richard, and from there we'll have OPWDD and the subcommittee reports. I know some of our members from the subcommittees are here. I thank them, and we're going to make sure we get a lot of good stuff out today because we have some good news, some interesting news, and I hope we don't have to hear the word the BAD bad news. But well, let's move on at this time. And at this time, I'm going to ask Deborah, chair of the Brooklyn Advisory Council, to please give her report. And then Brian, you'll go right behind her. Good morning, everyone. As Christopher said, I'm my name is Deborah Greif. I'm the chair of the Brooklyn Family Support Service Advisory Council in Brooklyn, and I am also the representative to the statewide Family Support Service Advisory Council up in Albany. Now, today was supposed to, we were supposed to have our statewide committee meeting. A lot of confusion, there's a lot of issues. First, let me just say, our commissioner is on maternity leave if she had her child, congratulations. But right now, that's all we know. The Albany, I'll say the central office had a hard time securing sites in Albany, as well as in a few other remote sites where the committee members or and also the members of the public could have participated. We also have, I have to let you know that the chairperson for the statewide Family Support Service Advisory Council, Chris Pelagia, has stepped down as the chairperson. He is from Region 1 in the Buffalo region. So we have, so with all these issues coming up it was the meeting was canceled there will be only an executive session to be meet i am meeting with the members to fix and rediscuss what is going on we need to get a new chairperson no i'm not running for the chairperson of the statewide it's a very i i feel someone else can do a far better job than me not upset about that at all my, also, we're trying to discuss something is very important. Is called the COI, which stands for Conflict of Interest, which means members who are members of the Advisory Council, when we do RFPs, we always have to have our Conflict of Interest forms ready because we can't sit in an RFP process or when we were doing site visits of an agency we got, we got our child gets the services from, or had an issue with and we transfer them out. So we have, and also we do have parents who are actually working in the field who have the right to be members of the advisory councils. And I say it with an S because it's statewide to be members of their local council. When the local council members vote and have that the chair, the, they represent, have their representative go up to Albany, that's fine. But we always have to have our updated. They rechanged and fixed the conflict of interest form, which makes it a lot easier for parent members and family members who are who have families with de children with developmental disabilities. So we'll have the actual, actual. We'll know which ones we are allowed to vote for. Excuse me. Can you please uh, mute, Miss Diane? Messery, please. Thank you. We have to make sure that everything's done on the up and up. This is required for Albany, but this is also true for any committees anybody's on. Whether you are a, and I'll explain too, you're on a local community board and you work, say, for a city or state agency, they come before the community board for something. 
that you need, may need to vote, you have to excuse yourself for cause. Hi, Jen, it's Debbie. <laughs> okay, so it's very important. And it is happened just, I, this is not just for OPWDD. OMH has committee members, sim, they have a similar system like us, not family support the way we do it, but there is, there's OASIS, there's so many committees. And when you have, and this is a training that also is, that is given by all local, I'm only gonna talk about New York City, in every five boroughs, all community boards have to be given the training for conflict of interest to make sure that nothing is being done inappropriate. We get updated training every year. So what OPW has been asking is correct and we will be filling it out correctly. We just needed a few clarifications and I appreciate that with the questions we asked, they answered us very quickly. So now my parent members will be, we will all be able to fill out for the parents who are members of the advisory to fill out the conflict of interest forms because we are concerned about all changes. We heard through the grapevine, and I well, don't quote me, I believe there may be updated changes to the admin for reimbursement. I'm not sure. I'm hearing maybe. If we find out, of course, we're going to put the information on the Brooklyn Family Support Service Advisory Council's website. Also, if you have questions that there's issues that you have. You have every right to contact OPWDD. And I, if you're having problems or compliments, please put it in writing. If you're having trouble getting to their site, go through the advisory council. We do have the link so you can get there. Now, I just want everybody to also understand that the changes that are coming with the statewide is was unforeseen and we have to we also have to make sure that we have we have to follow to what called the open sunshine laws we here are meeting it because everybody's here not everybody has a child with development abilities and not everyone works in our field there are people who are watching it and they have the right to anybody can watch in a meeting except when it goes into close executive session we also, I would ask everybody, tell your local elected officials that you would like for the quorums to be kept in this way. Since we are statewide for certain committees, that if we can't physically be in a site due to our child may be ill, family member be ill, and we can't get the care at the last moment, because these things happen, that we participate by video and that it will count toward a quorum. The Governor Hochul put it in. I'm hoping that it's passed and it goes through. For the reason is, since many of us have children with the development ability who also have serious physical health issues, crisis has come up. I had a mini crisis with my son, just say it was dental and Bell's palsy, but he's getting much better. And that's all I'll comment on. But I'm not the only parent who's had children or family members who have taken ill at the last moment. But we want to make sure that all of the counties, because there's 19 councils, are meeting, that they can communicate, because we have to, we are the local levels that tell our local development DDROs in New York City. We also tell Central New York City office, as well as we let the state know. That would be central when we go up to Albany to know what is working, what's not working. We want to make sure the programs are working well because family support services were put in place so that our children do not have to be placed into a residence or unfortunately the old Willowbrook type schools. So we we take our we take our I take this very seriously. I know my other council members do. But we are, and also want to explain one important thing. Yes, we are the customers, but when you have the word advisory in your actual title, as you see, it says Brooklyn Families Port Service Advisory Council. Our role is to just advise and give the information so that OPW can work with us to fix or improve or 
this agency is doing a great job to let them know so they know how which services are working and what's going well or wrong for the service system that OPWDD sits up there. They're the umbrella. They hold the umbrella over our developmental disabilities. And with that, I only have one more thing to say, which to me, it's I was very happy to see. As you know, yesterday was announced that there are going to be new Barbie dolls in the Barbie family from Ken. Many of them are going to have different disabilities. And one that was the da uh, you're going to have a young lady who looks just like Barbie, but she has Down syndrome. This to me was one of the one of the nicest things I've heard in a long time, because now we have children who have siblings who have disabilities, and now they both can play with each other with the dolls because dolls give you a nice sense of purpose and have fun. So the minute the Barbie doll comes out that has the girl with Down syndrome, I'm buying it, and that's the same for Ken. So I want to thank Mattel. And I hope other people who are hearing us, please do more inclusive things for our families, whether they're dolls, their games, their books. It's really important. So thank you, everyone. And I will be having to leave by a certain time because I have to meet in executive session with my count with my statewide council. But thank you, everybody. And if anyone um, has questions, I will uh, answer we're the gonna, questions. We're, we're, we're going to hold on to questions, and I'm going to remind everyone who are playing with their microphones right now, please keep them muted, because uh, right now I'm going to ask Brian to do her, his report, and then we'll go right to questions. Brian? Good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending this morning and taking time out of your busy schedules. Um, so a couple of quick announcements from the Brooklyn Council. First of all, as you guys can probably tell, Joyce was not able to attend today, so I'm filling in for her. Um, so a couple of updates. Uh, unfortunately, there's not much news from the state as we are still waiting for the budget to be passed. As of this Monday, there was another extension passed for the New York State budget. I think it's the latest the budget has been in uh, 10 years, I think I read. Um, but the positive for that is it still leaves us time to continue to send those one click letters. So I strongly encourage everyone here. Um, they're coming out from many different agencies and advocacy groups. Uh, we can send another one out if anyone hasn't seen any. It makes it very easy to write, call, tweet, post the governor um, to remember to keep supports and services for New Yorkers with IDD in her budget, increase what she planned on putting in her budget. The four main issues that we're advocating for is the eight and a half percent COLA, um, which is the cost of living adjustment to put in the final budget, health equity to advocate for telehealth parity reimbursement for people with IDD and TBI, early intervention, urge the governor and the legislator to include an 11% early intervention reimbursement rate increase in the final budget, and special education to advocate for our children with disabilities and ensure that New York meets their educational needs. So please, the longer the budget is held and delayed, the more time it is for us to not be forgotten and get our points out and our advocacy issues out to our local legislators and the governor. So we can definitely send that uh, one click out again, or if you have it, I think you can um, submit one every single day and you can post it on your social media, just get the word out. Uh, the other update from the Brooklyn Council. So we know we've gone through a lot over the last couple of years with COVID and leading up to COVID. So one of our main goals is to to reinvigorate activity in the council, revamp the council, basically rebuild the Brooklyn DD Council back to how it used to be. We've gotten a lot of feedback. We hear your feedback from the families and the providers out there that it's, it's not the same. Um, and it's been hard for a lot of us to bounce back after COVID. Um, but I think this is now the new norm. It's never fully going away. So there's no time better than now to, to reinvigorate and rebuild this council that is so important for one of the biggest boroughs representing people with developmental disabilities in New York City. That being said, uh, we do have an election coming up. And Joyce Levin, who has been the chairperson and involved in the council for many, many years and devoted so much time and energy into supporting the council, and the families and agencies in Brooklyn will not be running for um, a seat. 
she will be stepping aside from the council. So I will be running for the chairperson, but that leaves a number of open positions that we just want to make everyone aware of if they are interested to please um, email Joyce, email myself. Uh, we're asking that you email. Um, I'm sorry, just looking for the date. Chris, do you remember the date? Was it May, May 7th, 17th? It is May 17th, one week before our jo uh, next joint meeting. And if yeah. you do not, if you do not put it into Joyce's email, because she is the election chair for this committee, um, then will we will the slate will be announced at the next month's meeting as scheduled. Yes. Yeah, so please email Joyce by the 17th, or if you are at the May meeting, you can. Um, speak up and announce your interest in running for a position at that meeting and then the election right. will take place in june but just so everyone is aware um so obviously you can run for the chairperson uh we do have um other positions are provider vice chair family vice chair uh secretary and treasurer so again it's chairperson vice chair provider vice chair family secretary and treasurer so we'd really love if anyone is interested please reach out if you want more information on what that entails for each of those positions i'd be more than happy to talk to you as with joyce or anyone that's involved with the council or has past experience and again chris has joyce's email on the screen or you can um declare your interest in the may meeting and the election will take place in june uh, excuse me, Brian, Debbie, and, sorry to interrupt, but there is a requirement that we have to tell them. You've had to attend at least three meetings in the this, in this year. So we want everyone to be aware of that. Christopher has the attendance records, but everybody must have it. Uh, Brian, you want the others to let, say who said they're running or not? Uh, we don't need to make oh, that we'll announcement at this time. We'll wait for that until May, till everything's official. Yeah, yeah that'll be announced in May. Um, and the other thing is just so everyone understands when we talk about voting for the elections, um, we will have to review this, but basically it's in order to vote as a family member individual, you had to have attended two of the last four meetings. And as an agency, um, there will be a little leniency because we have not collected dues due to COVID. Um, and, and based on our bylaws, it's supposed to be all agencies that have paid dues, but we understand it, it is not agency's choice to not pay. We have not collected based on everything that has gone on during COVID and not having events and meeting in person. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there and make everyone aware. And also that each agency that is a member of the council, each agency gets one vote, not every member of the, that attends from that agency, just to be fair. But if anyone has any questions, um, please, you can email Joyce, you can contact me, and I'd be more than happy to speak with you. We're definitely looking, like I said, to revamp the Brooklyn DD Council, make some changes, and and listen to the thoughts and concerns from everyone involved, and, and get back to where we were and make it the best council that there is. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, before, uh, does anyone have any questions for Brian or Deborah at this time? Uh, there were some questions in the chat, just to let you both know. Uh, before I do that, Rachel, regarding the other person, he's not in the waiting room. And I would remind everyone that some people who are saying they're in the waiting room, uh, your name will pop up. But if you do not put your name into it, or like a number like 2023 the ring central or zoom does not let you in because that is the new security feature so i just want to make that clear he has to make sure he puts in the the meeting id number it's definitely his name then the password and it's been said on all systems on the website and email um brian there is a question to ask um there is a question for the dd council i think this is a deborah and and you um if 
actually, this is this is actually. I think I just answered that question. This is just regarding um, tendons. I think you just answered. Deborah just answered that question. But there's another question. Um, should we still continue contacting our elector elector officials? I'll take that because absolutely. I want to until there's a budget. Yeah, absolutely. We have to. Continue. Well, go ahead, uh, guys. You, you, you got go ahead. your team is really good. Your teamwork right well, here. Well, I got, Brian and everyone, I want you to know that I did everything that's been asked, and I have been getting letters, emails, and being answered on my social media pages. Uh, my, local, my new state senator is Simka Felder because they redistrict. He assured me he's fighting very hard for the COLA and for other things that we at OPWDD need. I also have a new assemblyman, and he's saying he will. I also know State Senator Alec Burkrasny has pledged his support. And I've been getting emails also from uh, State Senator, United States Senator Sh Schumer and Gillibrand. Yes, it still works. And please remember something very important. Even if, say, we don't get everything, be happy with what we got. But before you say, why say? Because. There is still time after a budget is passed for us to advocate and explain where there's shortcomings or what we need financially, what help we need so that our system can run correctly. So you all have a chance. Brian, you have anything you want to add? No, just let everyone know until there's a budget, advocate every day, send those one click letters, get it out on your social media, put the pressure on them. We cannot be forgotten. We cannot be cut out last minute because of all the politicking going on. Um, everything's being held up because there's too much policy being put in the budget. And it's not just about the New York state budget anymore. And it's been like that for the last few years. So just keep getting the reminders out, advocate our four points of the eight and a half percent COLA, health equity, early intervention and special education. Thank you. And I, you all, I also just want to add this to some parent part. You know, we, the parents of the generation just behind me, really were able to get help and services through early intervention and special ed because my generation and the generation before me, we advocated very, very strong. Now, we can't get every single dollar we want. And before you say, no, no, I do advocate for, for our population, but I also know we're not the only ones. We need, when you're asking for the funding, you need to explain how this will help. Also, if you can't go to work because you have to take care of your child, and that can mean still you have a child in their 30s and 40s, and you have they well, you don't have staffing in the programs they may be attending, you need to explain how this can affect your job because it will affect the tax base. So please, but do it in a positive way because they really want to know how it's going to affect this wherever area we are so please keep advocating even after the budget is passed you still have to advocate so they never forget what why we are advocating for any other questions uh, uh i'm gonna janet davis do you have something you want to add no not really okay because i thought because i saw you pop no it's okay i can i can see your mouth duty noted thank you uh, there is no other questions at this time, uh, Brian and Debbie. Um, so thank you for both your reports. Uh, next is Richard Abbott from IEC. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I just want to second what Brian was saying and thanking uh, Joyce Levin for her dedication and years at uh, heading up the council. Uh, and her involvement um, throughout the decades uh, in the DD system. Uh, I haven't heard Joyce is going away, so hopefully she doesn't, but um, thanks to Joyce uh, for leading us through this, especially the last few years. But I also want to second uh, what Deborah and Brian said about keep the pressure on Albany. The latest word is that they expect the budget to be passed by Friday. So now it's more important than ever that you reach out to your legislators, however you want to do it, whether one click buttons or 
call them or visit them if you have a personal contact um you know use it because now we really have to put the pressure on uh two key people in our system or senator john mannion who's uh, the head of the senate disabilities committee and rebecca seawright who's um the new assembly disabilities chairperson uh who's um, really been out there as a, a new champion in our field so uh, keep up the pressure on that um and especially uh parents have uh kind of an added um charm <laughs> i don't know if charm is the right word um with the legislators but you have a louder voice when a family member goes to the legislator and says i have a family member with a disability and here's here's the reality of it and here's why you need to, we need your support um so again this is the time to reach out to them uh, so they can push their politics aside for a minute and listen to uh, the real situation out there. Um, so um, I guess the other thing I will, um, and I'm going to try to be brief, um, I have to make an announcement that IAC's annual conference this year will be in person. Uh, last two years it was virtual. Uh, virtual has its advantages because you can get people from all over the country to attend and they're uh, much freer to be there. But I don't think anything replaces being in person. Uh, and this year it's on June 7th and 8th at the UJA Conference Center. Um, you can go up to IEC website, see the registration. The registration is up now if you want to be a sponsor. Um, and you can uh, purchase your tickets on the website. Some of the, the key people are uh, Dr. Alonzo Kelly, who's going to be our keynote speaker. And it seems like it's a former commissioner uh, conference. We have uh, Arthur Webb and Courtney Burke will be part of a special panel on the future of Medicaid, uh, which should be very interesting. Plus, we have Kate Marley coming from OPW. She's the person who leads the charge on the Medicaid waiver, um, very outspoken and candid. Um, so uh, she'll be there as well as uh, a number of others. Um, look on our website and check out the, uh, the conference. Um, just some other notes, if I can find them. Um, I, I think one of the the big things in, for discussion is, you know, they've announced that the um, public health emergency is ending on May 11th, and six months after that, um, everything goes back to so-called normal. Um, there are some uh, items that will be going into effect immediately on May 11th. I've lost my cheat sheet, so I don't have that, um, but we'll... Um, We'll keep you up to date on that. I'll, I'll share that uh, if you haven't. But it's, um, I think, the, one of the bigger challenges to the end of the public health emergency will be our day program. By November 11th, they're supposed to be back um, at full capacity and operating, and people who need they have services will be there again. The challenge of staff for day have programs, transportation to get people there. Um, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but I think we should all push towards getting people back to the day programs, um, whether it be with walls, without walls, and many people, it's a combination. Uh, so we'll be working on that. Um, other announcements out of Albany. Uh, as uh, Deborah announced that the commissioner has had her baby and she'll be out for a little while. And in the meantime, Eileen Hayes, who's the head um, chief counsel of OPWDD, and Rachel Baker are going to be holding down the fort uh, while the commissioner is away. Um, the other thing we're all waiting for is, as you may or may not know, Roger Bearden left a couple months ago. He was the executive deputy commissioner 
and they're expecting an announcement any day now of who the new executive deputy commissioner will be, um, which will help things. Um, a number of ADMs came out yesterday. Uh, I haven't read them to give the details, but um, uh, one of them is the eligibility. They're implementing the eligibility uh, legislation. Now, this is out for comment. So if you have it, please, please submit comments or attend the IAC meeting where we will be gathering comments. But on the eligibility legislation, that's where uh, OPW has 120 days to determine someone's eligible and authorize the services uh, for that person, um, which will be a, uh, a challenge for OPW as well as the providers. But it's uh, long overdue, and the legislators heard our voices there that people can't be waiting a year to get services. Um, so uh, that's out now. Uh, the other news is um, Richard. CMS. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, I just want to also throw out the point regarding the 120 days that Delia made it clear the other day that that clock will pause anytime there's a request for additional documents or clarity in documents. So my imagination, my, my assumption is there's many times it's going to go way beyond the 120 days because Anytime an email is sent requesting additional information, it puts a pause on that. Well, let's assume that OPW folks have the same goal as we do, get services to people as promptly as possible. Um, and yeah, we're gonna run into that. Um, I mean, New York City historically has been always uh, had a goal of getting services to people quickly. Um, some regions of the state aren't the same. Others are much faster. So uh, let's keep pushing it. And maybe a future council meeting will um, get some, maybe Dealey and a couple others uh, present to talk about how they're going to implement that. Um, it is a challenge. So, uh, Brian, we'll leave it up to you. Uh, so, CMS is coming to visit. CMS is the federal agency center for Medicaid and. Medicare services, uh, they're pretty much the ones who create the rules for our service system. Um, they're gonna come in uh, to assess the HCBS status um, and what progress we've made. We're hoping they'll feel similar to, uh, I guess it was at least 10 years ago where CMS came to New York State and declared that New York State had a model system for the country. Uh, things to uh, happen between then and now, uh, but let's hope they'll they'll find the same thing. I, I think they will. I mean, you look at the community settings rules and you say, well, you know, especially the rights that our people have, uh, you know, the ability to evict someone. We have so many protect protections uh, for the people we support. Uh, it's hard to imagine why they created these rules. Well, there's a lot more states in country than new york and they most states don't have the the rights that our people do we might be more bogged down in regulations which it seems like every other year there's an effort to reduce the regulations and then they come out with 10 new ones uh, so we'll see how that goes um we are trying to iac is trying to get a handle on the actual um, enrollment status and capacity of our day programs I know regional office is trying to get a handle on that also uh, because there's never been a really good data system, uh, pro, you know, location by location. And that's why um, the regional office recently um, is attempting to implement a, a roster system for each site. Um, so we should cooperate with that, um, but getting uh, find out where the vacancies are, what the staffing level is. I mean, again, that's going to be the challenge. Um, so just those of you who, just on the, uh, the bonuses for DSP staff, and then there, there recently came out where OPW is going to provide uh, bonuses for uh, support staff and clinical staff, and the guidance it's not real specific. You have to sign an attestation. 
Uh, there's been a lot of questions about, well, we want, we want more specific guidance. And our position right now is no, you do not want it. There, OPW is giving you the flexibility to use that money as you wish. Um, as long as it follows the attestation, there will not be, according to OPWD, they're not going to have a special webinar on the use of that money. Uh, IAC is going to put together a meeting, hopefully next week, um, for our human resources and our fiscal committees to go over all the issues and uh, maybe develop some internal guidance. Um, so the other big news that's been out is the um, the way amendment to the HCBS waiver and the overarching rule to this, and not rule, but theme to this is OPW wants to be able to make changes to our waiver services without having to go to CMS every time we want an increase uh, in a rate or, or a different way to deliver the services. Um, they're pushing to get the flexibility to uh, change the rules by ADM. Um, and can't argue with that at all. Um, there's also some, um, no, here comes my cat. Uh, there are also some proposals for uh, changing things in the Appendix K, such as um, higher fees for intensive behavioral services. Um, there's gonna be a change uh, that allow people who are over 60 to get uh, and, and those who live in certified residences are over 60 uh, to attend respite services for socialization and retirement activities. Sounds good to me. Um, uh, there are going to be some enhancements on the self-directed services, getting it out of the waiver again and, and getting it more controlled within the state. Um, they're removing, and I don't think it's ever been implemented, but those of you who have been around at least 10 years, it was a, an attempt to implement a, a penalty if you didn't submit your consolidated fiscal report on time. Uh, there was a 2% penalty, which will remain in place, uh, but they also were proposing a 50% penalty. Um, and, there, and that was never implemented after some reaction to that, uh, but they're gonna officially remove that. Um, so anyway, that's, that's the news I have today. Uh, again, I just encourage and look forward to the DD councils uh, throughout the city coming back to full strength. As Brian said, the councils have always been a very strong voice and very strong organization and influence on how the system moves. Um, it used to be where the councils for the local government plan would identify the priorities for spending uh, for that borough. And whether it was a family support RFP or support employment or residential, um, I would like to see that come back. It's hard to push back on that when things, things seem to be uh, coming out of central office um, maybe too frequently, but I think the councils have to regain their strength. Um, the councils across the city don't have the attendance that they used to uh, because it's all virtual. Uh, so maybe we'll get back to um, some virtual, some in person. But I, you know, just encourage all of you to get the strength back and the power that the city councils had. Um, so I'll leave that there. And if there's any questions. Richard, this is Chris. Before I uh, go to hand raise, because I know Deborah has a question, uh, just to for the record, our attendance for both councils, and I've been attending, you know, as doing doing my other hats in the other boroughs as transit, uh, representing for the accessibility. The attendance for Brooklyn is actually, you see, you're, everyone's thinking that's the number today. No, there is another group with us. So altogether, our attendance since we've been doing virtual has gone up. 70 almost 81 percent and this is going this is so far this year last year was definitely doubled it so attendance has been working very well for brooklyn 
on getting, you know, attendance for people. And let me just say this. We do have elected official representatives have been attending our meetings also. So I do want to make it very clear that we've been working during this COVID time. And I know that in the future we try to go back in person, but we do have to use optionals for a lot of people because some people will still attend the MTA board meeting, which they are, or do virtual. It gives them an option. So say like say the person's not feeling well one day or they're stuck at another meeting or their child is sick. We do have to remember that we have to use optionals like a mask is optional. We should be optional as well as a councils with an S. Yeah, thanks, Chris. And I also want to thank you for uh, getting elected officials to attend the meetings. I see Senator Persaud's office is in attendance, uh, mm -hmm. which is very important because, again, the councils kind of are the voice of what's going on locally. Um, and reports from your committees have always been helpful. I guess the thing I miss are those long lines of people that make the announcements in the heart share they have space. <laughs> So, um, and the coffee and the donuts. Uh, and the bagels. You don't get that virtually. And the bagels, yeah. So, yeah. I guess those old timers uh, look forward to getting back to the old time. Uh, but now, virtual works very good. It gives more people the opportunity to speak up. Uh, and the more family members, the better. Mm -hmm. uh, Deborah, you had your hand up. Yes, I do. First, Richard, um, please take this as well. I'm saying this is nice. I can't. My feelings are hurt a little because you see the advisory councils when known used to be known as consumer councils, we're the ones who did the RFPs for family support programs in not just New York City, across the state. And yes, I've also been a member of the DD Council's exec board. And years ago, the way it was different where that when we told them that certain programs are short, they need help. They were supposed to, they gave money to help for the councils, the DD count, the programs, whether it was through OPWDD or just the city set up the program for developmental disabilities. I understand that, you know, New York City, we're the only ones that have what's called developmental disability councils. I'm not talking about the statewide developmental disability advisory councils. But the advisory councils for family sports, we've been very strong in advocating. And that when the late Cal Fischetti was alive, he was a, he was one of the vice chairs, but he made sure that I made sure to represent the advisory then was consumer councils. So we should be getting some thanks too, because also during the COVID, we made sure this council made sure that the DD council had a place to share so that it would save the members from both councils they were able to go into two then instead of going to two meetings we combined it to one and we've been advocating many years the other thing is chris and i both have advocated together to have the elected officials come to our meeting we realize they can't always so their staff has been coming they call us on a regular basis they've had us even come into meetings to ask the show where they need to help us. So we have been doing this together as a team with my family, my council members on both councils. So I just want to bring that up. The other important thing is, you know, the ARC nationwide is doing a major, and I hope everyone is doing advocating. We're trying to raise the income levels so that our children can, if they choose to work, will not you lose their waiver because they went over $1 over what mom or dad made. It's really important. They are raising the rate, the not just the income for Social Security, but they're talking about that your parent, I'll use my father, he died, say, two years ago. His income level is not the same. If I went to work, I could end up making more money, and then I would lose the Medicaid waiver because I went above my parents' income. Because then since 1939, the law that if you're, that used to be called the widows and orphans, and eventually it came to that you're either a disabled adult child or you're an adult child survivor. You collect under your parents' social security, the one who made the most. 
then it could be doesn't have to be the mother or the it's which parent has more money in their social security and trust and then we also can collect medicare under our parent social security and another positive change that new york state has done is now people who are just been only on ssi can collect they now they're letting us collect medicare part a and b yes i just found out and i'm in shock but happy but that's why new york state is way ahead in many 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 ways but we need to advocate and we need to work with all the arcs in the 50 states because i don't i know individuals really want to work and i think it's great i love that but i want don't want them losing their medical insurance because some of them have very intense you know pre-existing conditions that once it's known their insurance they're paying they're paying only for their insurance not for what they really need so I hope that IAC is working across the state with all the arts. New York City, it's AHRC, but it's a very important. And that's what it, so. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. You know, let me just also add, I didn't mention it before, maybe people don't realize this, is the DD councils in New York City are unique. There are nowhere else in New York State where you have groups like this to get together on a monthly basis composed of parents and providers and education system and adult system um so we are unique um and we just got to build on that any other questions uh this is chris uh we do have questions in the chat uh one of your uh <coughs> since you since you mentioned coffee you left out tea and that was someone you know uh always say good morning to you in the when when, when we at heart share uh richard you missed the line of the t2 most of us miss just taking the people's inflammation and the and the meeting and other things as well uh that was the first question i think you know who that is it's already in the automatic chat in the main chat uh okay. as well as as well as rachel agrees with that as well so with the participating appreciation also um uh, and that is the other one that was brought up the other question uh that's in the private section in the uh with the groups um they are appreciating and rachel i'll get you in just a second because i want to finish these questions and then i'll go back to hand raise um the other questions are they, the group is very appreciated to attending this meeting because they feel like in this borough or another borough, and that's all as far as I'm going, they feel like they can get more information and have a stronger discussion, agreeing and disagreeing. They feel that this borough is more active than the other two boroughs. So, they feel like they, they like coming to this meeting because they always get some different tasting. They can actually get the announcements. And they also like to hear the announcements from the person's voices, too. So, and the one thing they just added is they like the word optional if the meeting does go back to in-person. So, right. just to let you know, Richard, that um, it seems a lot of people are really happy about, you know, getting using optional we're not you know we're not losing the battle we're getting strength in numbers anything to respond to that no i think everything is pretty much going to be hybrid um mm -hmm. because uh, we have meetings at iac where when in, when they were in person three mm -hmm. three and a half years ago uh we'd have maybe up to 50 people in the room sometimes bigger but now we're getting 200, 250 people participating. Um, sharing that knowledge, sharing issues uh, is critical uh, and very important. Um, so now I, I encourage you to continue that way. Uh, the technology for hybrid is not that easy because you have to have a room that can uh, accommodate um, you know a virtual system yeah and there's times just to let everyone know it's not easy because 
you see, there are some other places you got to make sure because some other places are still asking you have to wear a mask. Some places you don't or optional. So we still have to be very, very careful. Um, I'm going to go to Rachel because she had her hand up. Thank you, Chris. Um, oh. First, uh, you know, I actually do support continuing virtual at this time. Um, and it is challenging to do hybrid because of the technology and we do get participation. Two things. One is I know that you've mentioned a few times that there's other groups watching and that there's more attendance than what's visible on um, our participant screen. And I just think it would be helpful for the group as a whole to know what other groups are watching, who's participating, and mainly so that we can have more effective collaboration and um, you know, know exactly who our, who our membership is in the council. The second thing is something more specific to Richard, his point around the day programming, which is um, in the last OPWDD family stakeholder meeting, there was some discussion about um, the requirements of when the uh, public health emergency ends of day programming to go back to all in, per, you know, majority in person. And I did raise the issue of transportation very strenuously because some people are choosing, it seems like they're choosing to do virtual because it's supposed to be the person's choice. When in fact, it's not really a choice. It's just that the transportation that's being provided is so daunting when you have one bus for the entire borough of Brooklyn participants in a program. Uh, it makes it a very lengthy and arduous commute, which is not you know, uh, congenial for many people. And what I was pleased about is that uh, Ms. Haynes did say that they were aware of this problem and they're actually trying to work on a solution because they know that this would solving the transportation issue is really a prerequisite to getting, you know, the majority of people back to program in person. So that's it. Yeah, and the transportation problem, um, one of the probably the biggest problem is, you know, getting staff, getting people, you know, drivers and matrons for the bus. Um, you know, IAC is in contract with a number of bus companies and currently transporting, I want to say about 2,000. I know they're up to like 60% of the pre-COVID capacity. Um, <clears throat> the biggest problem is getting the bus companies that have this, you know, the drivers. Uh, <clears throat> because all these bus companies also serve Board of Ed system and um, they're always going to try to give them the priority. <laughs> so anyway, it's uh, again an ongoing challenge to attract people to work on our day programs and on the buses. And <clears throat> um, yeah, transportation always has to improve, especially uh, the length of the trip. And that's one reason IAC started the Interagency Transportation Services Program um, was for quality services. Um, so, you know, thank you for that. We'll just keep moving forward. Uh, and I think one you, of the unfortunate you, things now with transportation, oh. one of the unfortunate sorry, things Ryan? with transportation is even when these bus companies do find staff that the agencies are being told to take six to eight weeks to get everything up and running. Um, right. So families hear that, oh yes, we have transportation, but hold on, it takes another six to eight weeks and that kind of deflates everything going on. Um, yeah. But again, it all ties back to the staffing crisis and there's little we can control to improve that until the staffing crisis is improved. Right. Uh, thank you, Richard. Um, at this moment, um, that was the last question. And regarding the other question for you, Rachel, one of the groups has asked not to mention because they do not want to mention. And I just asked them that question. They have, they don't, they will discuss this off the uh, camera as well as recording. They like to be private at this time. I have mentioned this, I know, uh, a couple of months ago. I know you weren't at the meeting, but they do not want to. Um, mentioned they like to be uh private thank you um 
and I just so and I do want to move on because we do have um is OP I want first I want to thank thank you Richard uh for the excellent report and I do want to move on thank to you, our Richard Deborah has I'm I know you and I'm saying goodbye to everybody bye uh, at this moment right now, I'm going to ask, is uh, Eileen here from OPWDD? And then after that, we do subcommittee reports. Yes, Eileen is here. Hi, yes. uh, hi uh, everyone. Hope everyone's hi. doing well. Hi, Chris. Did, did you hear me? Eileen, this is Chris. I can hear you loud and clear. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so I, I just wanted to, you know, say hello to everyone. Um, <clears throat> you know, um, hope everyone is doing um, great. Um, I know there was some talk about um, the PHE is is ending on May 11th. Um, I, I just wanted to share a couple of things that, you know, some of the things that, you know, the the things that were put in place. Um, for the PHE, it, there, there's it, there's going to be a winding down period. Um, however, there are a few things that are ending on May 11th. Um, you know, uh, I'm just going to read over a couple of things. Just bear with me one second. Um, a lot of this has to do with the life plans and the care managers. Um, the, the in-person face-to-face requirements beyond those that are uh, deemed medically uh, necessary, that's going to be uh, ending May 11th. Uh, the annual L LCD determinations are, uh, are deferred for no more than one year from the original due date. That's on May 11th. Um, life plan signatures, verbal or email approval, of proposed changes and additions to the life plan are acceptable still on, on May 11th. Um, uh, life plan annual meetings, um, that's going to go back after May 11th. And one of the bigger things that is uh, going on is as everybody knows, the Medicaid applications, Medicaid re, um, renewals, um, those after June uh, are going to start having to renew. And I know that you know we're not Medicaid, so but I know that some people's were automatically renewed and 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 somewhat weren't. Sometimes they had to send the the paperwork back. So, but um, the, the paperwork, the renewal packages should start, uh, I think they already started to come out for June um, and they will continue as people's Medicaid uh, renewal date comes up. I also just wanted to address the roster issues um, with DAHAB since um, I happen to be on the meeting and that is my unit that um, uh, covers uh, DAHAB enrollment. We are in the next couple of weeks going to be, as we receive DDPs, uh, DDP1s for site-based, and this is only for site-based, um, we're going to be sending, you know, if, if John Smith from an agency puts in a DDP1 to enroll Mary Jones, we're going to um, be sending out copies of rosters so that agencies can, you know, make sure that the, the rosters for that particular site is correct. So this will only come up, you know, with um, site-based day have and site-based supplement supplemental day have. Um, so we, we are working, uh, we are going to start, you know, working some more with the agencies to get the roster straightened out. The, the, the project, as everybody knows, was a statewide project. Um, my unit um, worked with all the agencies in New York City to, you know, with all the glitches and, and there were clearly, clearly a lot of uh, computer glitches. Um, but we 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 were working and are still working with all the agencies with the DAHA projects. But pretty soon, as as DDP ones come out, uh, you know, come in for um, site based DAHA enrollments, 
uh, the person who sends it will probably be getting a, a copy of the roster. Um, and that, that's in the next couple of weeks, we're going to start that. And that, that's all I have for today. Brian, do you have a question? No, I don't, but I just want to thank Eileen for joining us and providing. Hi, Brian. How are you? <laughs> you know, I haven't I'm been good. on one of these you? meetings in a, in, a, in a bit, and I, I see a lot of familiar faces. Yes, Eileen, and um, I'm still I'm still around. I'm still in the neck of the woods. <laughs> but um, there is a question that has been brought up, not just in the questionnaire here, but outside the questions. Uh, and I know Transition is also here, can vouch with me also. Uh, a lot of people are asking, when is the new 2023 Family Support Guidebook going to be updated? Um, I, is Angela on? Um, I, or, uh, I or have no from idea. Family Support on? Otherwise, I can get back to you, Chris. I I, I don't have that on my, my, my finger. My fingertips are... Just getting shredded after years here anyway, but I don't I, I don't have that, but I can get that easy. Um uh the 2023 uh family support. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I will I, I don't know the answer. I, I don't want to make up a random date either. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, no, but, and, uh, and, and, I can get and, back to you. And you and I understand that, but the concern is is um it's not just the transition committee was mentioning this. But it's been uh, even on the question here on the chat that a lot, of, as you know, some agencies may have updated their information or lost their contract or moved. We're lucky on our website. They do, you know, lucky we update our information once a week. Uh, about wow. if an agency moved, so we do remind all agencies. That's why I remind everyone from the beginning. To the end that. Um, you have an announcement, please put it into the chat or email us. If you have something new, we need to know because then, bam, we have to make sure that all information is up to date. Just like if, say, Richard wants me to put something on our website regarding the IAC conference or say there's a special meeting he wants everyone to attend. I need to know so, therefore, I could put it onto the website like Fasten in the Steel and Bullet. So um, that's the one thing I want to remind all the agencies. Uh, before I go to the hand raise, because I do see hand raise, uh, I am going to read. There is a question here, um, and I think it's actually it's in your section too, Eileen. It's in the regular with everyone in the chat. Uh, I have a question, and it says to mention what is the mandated amount of time for lunch? Is it for individuals in day half? Uh, Fran, why don't you shoot me, you know, give me an email. I, 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 um, you know, we are the enrollment side. We are not, you know, the, 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 you know, uh, quality management side and the billing side. So that's a question that wouldn't be necessarily directed towards me because I am, you know, I, I'm in charge of putting people in. Um, that's more of a billing uh, question, but Fran, I can, you know, we, we speak all I the mean, time about I can about jump in just as a so... provider of Dayhab. Okay, um, thank you. So thank it's, you. It's, it's 30 minutes for lunch in Dayhab, and that's one of our big uh, advocacy pushes right now because with the waiver K ending, we were allowed to bill during the pandemic for that 30 minutes and I have to admit our staff probably worked the hardest during the lunch period between all the bathrooming and the feeding and to go back to that we can't count that as billable time in day half really is going to hurt a lot of agencies um but at, but if it goes back to 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 Francesca's question it it's 30 minutes that we have that that technically is not billable in the day half time for full time day half Thank you, Byron. I have heard the scuttle, you know, from agencies complaining about the same thing that, you know, from, um, you know, the, the change in it. Um, but is is that kind of being, like, pushed back right now? Is is there talk about that? So in the, what was the, the OPW just released that? Um, yeah. I forget what they called it, the, the 
the PowerPoint, like rolling back the public health emergency, that was one of the things yes. highlighted that that's going away. Um, so I know a lot of the providers are getting vocal that that's something if we're asking for things that should be made permanent, that's definitely high on the priority list. I'll bring that back too. Thank you. We, we've all just, just let you know, like we've all been sitting in a lot of meetings with, um, you know, the, 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 the leads in the different, you know, uh, functional areas of OPWDD have been sitting in a lot of, um, different meetings with the the PhD and you know my unit for those who don't know I'm 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 waiver and enrollment uh, for New York City and we're going to have um some projects coming up because there's a lot you know there's basically we you know uh, other than in a a small class of people we have not been able to remove anybody from the waiver um unless they they've you know it, it's it's death moved out of state or requested it so there's going to be some work to be done you know from lists that have been around you know for the three years um so we're we're kind of focusing on that so i do appreciate um you jumping in with the lunch question and eileen that's what's called teamwork yes <laughs> yes yes and that's, and that's why i say we in the boroughs right now, we keep that as teamwork. And, th th and Brian second my motion. Uh, right now, I don't have any questions in the chat, so I'm going to go to Dolores Khan. Her hand was up. Hi. Um, good morning. My name is Doris Khan. I'm the outreach coordinator for New York State Institute on Disability. Um, good morning, Eileen. I just I didn't get your last name or your title. I know you're with Waver and Enrollment. And the second question I have. And it's not, it's it's not relevant to what you do. But you did mention that the PHE is going to expire May 11th, and I was wondering if um, if now providers who were giving remote services would now have to be in person. If, there, if there's uh, different. Yeah, what? yeah, you're going to have to email me on that, and I'm going to give you my email. Yeah, if you could give um, me your because... last name and and email address. Yeah. I appreciate it. Because, uh, you know, as I just mentioned, we're all sitting in a lot of meetings that are specifically, right. you know, you know, no, no one's asking me a waiver question. <laughs> so, no one's asking a waiver. Um, I, I am, um, my, my, I spell Eileen differently. It's I-L-E-N-E. -E. Yeah. Excuse right. me, I'm sorry. Before you guys continue, uh, Wayne Clark, please, as a remind you, please mute your microphone. That because Dolores, I don't think Eileen, you heard the whole question. I'm going to ask Dolores Khan to please repeat your question. I want to make sure she heard it for the record. As a reminder, everyone, please show courtesy and respect when a speaker is speaking to someone. Please continue, oh, guys. I, I, I think I did. She's she's I just asking to make sure what, she heard what, what, my name and title and right. what um what what can be done remotely versus has to be in person now. Um, right. so I'm going to, um, tell you to email me cause I, you know, I, I, I don't want to give you wrong information. And again, that's not directly Thank under you. me. So you could um, give me the, put it in the chat, your email address. I appreciate that. Okay. It's I L E N E dot yeah. S is in Sam a C C O at O P W D D dot N Y dot G O V. Thank Eileen, you. this is Chris. Can you please put that into the chat box, please? Uh sure. I can Yeah, it's it the, if you're on the computer screen, it's okay, right at the it. bottom. Just type your autograph yep, away. Got it. Yep, I'm in it. Okay. Oh, chat has got it at opwtg.ly.gov. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Eileen Sacco's email. Please give us, I'm going to remind everyone, because I made this promise to Delia Tucker, as well as Nina, please give them time to get back to you. It does, as you know, every development, I'm going to say for Brooklyn only, because Eileen, you know I'm going to only mention our borough. Uh, please give them the courtesy. They will get back to you as soon as possible. Remember, they deal with not just one person. They deal with 72 point million families in the borough of Brooklyn. Please give them the courtesy, okay? 
if it's if it's going to take one or two days, give them a chance. If it's coming on to a weekend, you know that 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 you know they do not work on Saturday, Sunday, and holidays. So I want to make that very clear on that. Uh, Wayne Clark, do you have a question for Eileen Sacco? Thank you. No, I don't. Thank you, sir. No problem. Making sure. Thank you. Okay, uh, Eileen, there is no other questions unless, Brian, do you have a second question? I don't have any questions. Just again, thank you for your time, Eileen, and it's good seeing you again. It's been a while. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, um, I have to get back to a couple of people with uh, answers. Um, um, I, but those who know me know I'm pretty good at getting back. I, you know, I wish I had all the answers about everything. Um, but I, I, I have to say thank you because I usually say I, I deal with like 125 agencies, but you know, 72 million people does sound like might make make my job sound so much more impressive. So thank you for that, and uh, you know, um, you know, enjoy the rest of the meeting, and I'll get back to everybody. And Eileen, this is Chris. Just before you leave, don't forget to contact me. As don't be a stranger to me as well with that Coca Cola. Uh, let me move on to the subcommittee reports because um, we do have, and I know Brian, you want to take that? Well, I believe we have um, Pilar here, who is one of the co-chairs of the Brooklyn Transition Committee that restarted a couple of months ago and has been doing some really good work. So just wanted to give her a chance to introduce herself to the larger committee and give some updates on what's going on at the Brooklyn Transition Committee. Well, are you still here? Yeah, I'm here. There Hi, you thank you. Um, um, Chris, when you get a chance, Heather's last, last name is spelled incorrectly on there. It's Lifland, um, L-I-F-L-A-N-D. Can, can you put that into the chat, please? So therefore that um, then I can get it. The email is correct. It's just her contact name is incorrect. So okay. it's totally fine. Oh, okay. um, so um, my name is Pilar Jones. I work at HRC. Um, I'm a program director for Brooklyn uh, EBS Dehabilitation Program. So the conversation about Deha was uh, definitely very important to me. Um, but I am also co-chairing the Transition Council Committee um, with Heather Lifflin. Heather is Transition Link Court, uh, Transition Coordinator uh, for Brooklyn Schools District 75 out of P. 373K. Um, so we have been working together. We took over for um, Ms. Mary Christopher um, and the transition committee to restart it. We focus on specifically transitional services in Brooklyn. So that means that students that are transitioning out of DOE services into uh, OPWDD um, or otherwise adult based services. Um, specifically, we do talk a lot about. CCOs, getting eligibility, um, they have programs, employment programs. So we've been doing a lot of presentations um, on a number of different things. Last month, we did a presentation on day haves. Um, prior to that, we did presentations about self-directed services, what that means, what that looks like. Um, the committee invite is open to anyone. I put it in the chat if you are interested in joining or you want to present at our transition committee with some type of information. We invite care managers and teachers, um, a lot of social workers from schools, transition coordinators from schools attend so they can find out about services for their students. Um, we do invite parents and families and advocates as well. We don't get so many, um, I would say, of that. So please also share. I think a lot of parents have good questions um, about what does it look like getting services out of DOE and into OPWDD is a really big question. It's a very, you know, scary time. It's a lot of information. Parents are so used to what they're getting from Department of Education, and that transition to OPWDD can really be, um, you know, just overwhelming. So the point of the transition committee is to make sure that we can get teachers, care managers, parents, families, advocates as informed as possible about available things for those in the transition point of life so that the process can be smooth for them. Um, and basically, uh, so we have also created 
um, a shared resource drive. I will um, send it to Chris, or Chris has the information. He can send it probably at the end of this meeting. I typically wouldn't say email me and Heather at our HRC or schools emails, just because things get lost. We created a Brooklyn transition email. Um, so all questions that are related to transition can go there. Um, again, Chris, Brian, everybody has that email also. We have a shared drive where we keep copies of like flyers or information or resources. So the parent advisory um, uh, workbook, that would be really great to get an update. I know Chris mentioned that, so we can put that on there as our resource. Um, if you have program openings or information about your programs or information that as it relates to transition that you have in a PDF or something that you would like us to share. We also share pretty much anything that's going on in Brooklyn related to transition at the top of every meeting. And then I share the links at the end and everybody can also access our resource drive. It's a Google Drive. We figured since we're still doing the virtual thing, why not update ourselves and, and um, you know, instead of everything being in an email thread that gets lost, the flyers live somewhere and people can go back to that information at a later date if they missed it during the meeting. Um, I'm not sure if there was anything else you guys wanted me to add. The next meeting date. Um, I'm sorry? Date. I think you're We alone. can't hear you, Chris, but I think what he's yeah. saying, Pilar, is just um, throw the out the, the date of your next meeting. Next meeting. Oh, yes, our next meeting is going to be May 18th. Transition committee meetings are every third Thursday of the month. Um, and we've been doing them virtually, just um, seems to be the work best for us. We'll probably continue to do them virtually. Um, works good for me and Heather because we are in settings that are usually really loud during the day. Um, so we, you know, try to get off and move over to the side to do our, our virtual meetings. Um, we can't always really be off site and I, yes, Doris, I will send you the email. Uh, to, I sent you the, uh, the invite it should come from the Brooklyn transition committee email, the invite itself. Um, so if you want to be invited to the meeting, please let us know. I can forward the link. I will put in the chat, the Brooklyn transition email address where you can contact myself or Heather, um, and also get invited to the meetings or share any information if you have. I think that's it for me. Uh, Heather, there's some questions. And just that... as an additional plug, it's really, I'm sorry, Chris, just one second. Go ahead, go ahead. Just as an additional plug for, for, for Pilar and the committee, I mean, it, we're in April. Graduates are coming up. Before you realize it, it's going to be June, and there's going to be three plus years of graduates coming out of the school system because of all the COVID extensions. Correct. So there is no better time, time to I'm get not involved. Lie. I was, as, yeah. as someone who works in a transitional day program that has mostly people that are out of high school without walls, is very busy right now. We have a lot of referrals. So. Um, if you need these resources and this information, the transition committee is definitely a good place to find or ask these questions. Sometimes we also invite care managers or people to bring in like case specific questions. We'll do like a case study. If you have somebody that you're working on your caseload and you find like placement is really difficult or getting these evals is very difficult, we try to as a team work together to find the person, the support that they may need. If they have, we know somebody who's doing evals really quickly right now and shoot them into that, into that, um, contact that person. So if you are dealing with graduating students, this is the time to definitely join the transition committee. And I just want to add, cause I did attend the last month's meeting. Um, I was very, very, very impressed with your colleague, uh, with the presentation. And I have to say that I'm very pleased. And if Deborah, if Deborah was here, she would actually agree with me. We really, really like this, this transition community I'm seeing is to me is a new one. And I will encourage everyone in here. And I agree with Brian, what he just said. And I was glad Brian said it instead of me saying, but I'm going to say it as the other half. I hope to see every parent, every agency to please attend because I agree with the transition committee co-chairs. As you know, students are graduating. Our business is still got to go continuing and still reminding people. Students to have to still graduate. Students need to know where to go. We still need our business is still continuing. We shouldn't just be stopping or saying, oh, I can't attend. If you cannot attend, get someone else to attend. And I encourage 
every parent to attend. And Hello, Wayne, how are you? My name is Sarah Singleton. I'm a research scientist calling. Uh, Ryan? Uh, sorry. <laughs> I was like, excuse me? I didn't know it was that good. But um, I'm encouraging every parent to please attend. If you know a parent needs to know, even doesn't matter if they're not graduating this year, they need to know the information. They need to know the services. They need to know the right information they need. Encouraging you all, please attend the next meeting, which is May 18th. So any, and I know there are some questions here and I thank to our coach who just put it into the chat very much. And I'm gonna ask you guys, I am very impressed with them. And thank I'm you really, everybody, thank you. And thank I, you, Chris. I, yeah, you know, I'm gonna brag, but I have to say, it. I encourage everyone to please attend. Uh, does anyone else have any questions for her? Otherwise, I'm going to move on to the next subcommittee. I do want to thank Ms. Jones, who is here. And let me tell you something, it's not easy for them, but I do appreciate them being here. Um, unfortunately, thank Rose, you, Pilar. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, you guys. Pilar. Thank you. I do have to go, but I was waiting. So thank you. <laughs> Bye. But thank you so much. And the reason I'm going to reverse quickly, as a remind you guys, uh, Family and Provide Information did meet last month. Uh, attendance was good. We did discuss some other business, some of the what we're talking today, but I'm going to remind everyone our next meeting as Rose set up a great speaker. As you know, we are going to be talking about benefits and retirement specialists who's going to be there to talk about the overview of Medicaid. As Deborah mentioned, a little new, some tasting area of Medicaid and Social Security. We will be discussing this. And as I remind you, I hope to see everyone attending that subcommittee as well. So, Brian, do you want to add anything? Not at this time, thank you. Okay, just want to make sure. Uh, does anyone have any questions about this subcommittee? Provider information. And I remind you, anyone could attend. That's parents, individuals, self advocacy group. That could be also the providers, the parents, and representing elected officials. I'm going to remind you, anyone could attend these executive committee meetings. Please, please, please attend. Teamwork is the strongest word. So therefore, I'm going to move on to our next agenda item, which I'm going to get to. And I want to, oh, before I click on, to remind everyone, our next meeting is May 24th. As Brian mentioned earlier, if you're interested in running for a position for the DD Council, it is due by May 17th. And as Ryan mentioned, you can mention it on the 24th when it's mentioned as well. And now I'm going to move on to now before I go on, uh, I know we have Joe from Roxanne Prasad's office. If he's here, does he want to say a few words? And there's, if there are any other elected official representatives here, can you please identify, raise your hand or please put your name into the chat so I can announce you? Joe, are you here from Senator Prasad's office? Going once, going twice. Okay, we did know that Joe was here. Uh, he's been attending our meetings, not just here, but provided information. I hope he'll be attending the other committees as well as other elected officials are attending. I know he's been getting a lot of information, but we'll move on from there to go into news update as some of us have been brought up already, and then we'll go right to announcements. And I'm going to skip that. First of all, um, as a reminder to everyone, as we all mentioned, that um, we are reminding everyone to please contact your not just city but state and i'm going to say really or elect a federal official representatives because of the budget very much so therefore i am going to remind you all it is still time to contact your officials as they mentioned this already i am encouraging everyone to please do your parts today as well on these certain items like as i mentioned already the list is still here as brian said they extended it uh, in upstate, 
it is still time to mention the only thing we need to remind our officials is also because we did send a letter out a few months ago is to make sure that every part of the MTA accessibility is uh, fund fully funded, not just at the train stations, but at certain areas on buses and accessory as well. We still need to continue that because some of our individuals do use those transportation as well. Also, on a good notice, since the court has settled the lawsuit of the elevators, everything is now dismissed for that as of Monday. That is one graduation we can mention. Uh, it is a great honor that now we do not have to worry about any lawsuits. So, guys, congratulations on that. Uh, Carrie, I know, has been mentioning this, and I am still going to mention this. I am sick and tired of hearing the word C U T. Please, guys, I know Carrie just put it in there. Thank you, Carrie, for a second on a motion. But I am going to remind you uh, we do need to still tell our city and state officials that I do not want to hear the word cutting libraries. As our students, our individuals, our kids, and the much way I say it, we need to make it clear. No cuts. We need the funding for the libraries, and we need it as soon as possible. I don't know why I have to hear this every century or every four to five years or eight years. We need to make that very clear. So please do your part. This is not just for the families. This is for everyone. Our libraries is to help us to give out information out when we have if we want to do a resource fair or a meeting, workshops, get onto the computer, much all those information. If I mention everything, we'll be here until next year. As Carrie put it into the chat, I'm saying the same thing. Please contact city council as well as your state assembly and senator as well. And for the heck of it, you see your Congress, go for it. It still needs to be brought up as well. So uh, changing hats around. The Advisory Council Outreach Update will be meeting on May the 3rd. As we're discussing, the borough president is discussing some ideas, not just regarding public health, environment, community services, housing, and accessibility. We need everyone to please try to attend that meet, attend that one. There will be comments and questions that I have to do and bring it to the borough president to make sure he knows that not just the councils, but to know in his borough what do we need? The number one thing I think we already need is full funding of libraries is number one. Better communication about public health for seniors and people with disabilities. And housing is going well, but we need to make sure housing is truly accessible, ADA accessibility. So all those comments I gave you a sample can be mentioned on the 3rd of May as well. And I'm going to remind you, these are the sample chart right now. So please read that chart and make sure any ideas you have from now to May 3rd, please bring that. Uh, and I know Carrie's writing a lot, and I know I'm going to move on to other things, but Carrie, let's, uh, we can hold on to that chat later. I'm going to continue on this. Now, the borough president will have a town hall regarding this, and all our comments will be there, and there is a survey going out. Uh, that survey is available on our website as well. And the town hall is on May 18th from 6 to 8 at Borough Hall. If anyone is interested, can attend as well. More the merrier as well. Uh, as some of you have seen already, has been asking me this question since, since March 10th. Yes, the R211 train is running. There's only one set. It is running on the A line and is running really well. So if you see it, get on. It's a train. It's a nice accessible train. The accessible full seatings are in the first car, the middle, and the back. There are still other cars with accessible seating, and the screens are larger, and it does move pretty more faster than other trains. So I'm going to move on. Uh, customer centers have now extended more openings. The stations you see on the list on the top left are still, well, as you know, Cornell was the first one. We like to report that uh, Flushing, Fulton Street in Manhattan, Jackson Roosevelt, Myrtle Wyckoff is now open. Other stations on the bottom list will be opening soon. Once we have that, you will be, we'll, I will update you later on on that as well. So we're going to remind everyone uh, at Atlantic Avenue Barclays Center, and I know my screen's a little behind, uh, as you're aware that we do have the new gate 
that you can use your Omni or your Metro card and the gate door will open. Uh, don't worry if someone goes tries to they can't break through it because the thing will say not access and yes there is a camera to watch you on this. So please make sure you guys do your part right there. And a reminder, the Brooklyn redesign pop-ups areas are in the areas. Today, there will be at Church Avenue on the F and G from 3 to 6. You may see me there. But I remind you that you still have time to put your comments in about the buses and DOT as well. If there's any concerns you have, you can say it on during the question time when anyone has any questions as well. And a reminder, everyone, Omni Reduce here. Some of you have been asking me this question. If you want the presentation, please email to accessibility on that email address. And again, it will be nice to see agencies to please do that so that all everyone is fully trained on it. Because this is very important. So when we do switch from MetroCars to Omni, everyone is prepared. Oh, and for the record, there is no fair hike at all at this time. So guys, whoever's making a rumor, it's not true. The fit right now, we are not discussing anything until the summer. So we have time. And I remind you again, please see your elected officials. And I remind you, please always visit our website. If you have something you want to add to the website, please email us at that email address as soon as possible before this Friday or any Friday on that as well. And I remind you, if you need to call us, as I remind you, some of you who are leaving messages like mumbling, we ask you to remind you to please leave a clear and slowest message. It is not fair for Ann Menino, our executive assistant, has to check that message, and no one is leaving a clear, slowest message. So please do your part on that as well. Because right now, what I'm seeing is, is everyone leaves a message, I'm going to remind you, if you're not speaking clearly or does not leave a phone number, we cannot return your call. So I am reminding you, it's a courtesy. Please do your part. And Menino, our executive assistant, does check the messages four to, at least four to five times. And she does get, and we do get back to you as soon as possible. So please do our part. I'm going to go to questions, and then we'll go to announcements. I'm reading one. I am still – okay. Carrie, to answer your question, the card is still in the phase. I have not made an announcement when the Omni card will be ready. The only thing I'm going to remind everyone is please go to Omni – please go to Omni – Omni Reduce Fair. Please make sure you put that question in. Do you want the app or the card? The card is not ready yet. Only the app will be is ready and the app does have instructions as you saw Deborah introducing the app almost eight months ago or six to eight months ago that is no actually it is uh, six months ago uh, she is still doing that as well so I hope that answered your question uh, Sandy do you have a question for me Sandy neighbor your hand was up Sorry, uh, I meant it to to raise my hand for the announcement. Sorry, I did it a little bit too soon. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's okay, Sandy. At least I'm not. I'm just making sure. And yes, Gary. Yes, she is. That is a great video. Especially, it hit the highest numbers in history. It's actually higher than anything. But that's the that's a, that's another good thing. Uh, since no one else has any questions or comments for me at this time, uh, Brian, do you have a question for me? I have no questions, Chris. Yeah, you know, I always got to check with you. <laughs> okay. Uh, at this moment in time, I am going to move on to our announcements. And I remind everyone, please have your hand raised. I know, Sandy, your hand was dying to get up there faster than a heartbeat. But let's make – okay, there's a fighting battle here. I love this. I love this fighting battle. Let's see who won the battle on that one. Carrie Banks. Carrie? Oh. Hi, it's Carrie. I thought Sandy was first, but I'm happy to step up. Hi, everybody. It's great to see you. And Chris, thanks again for your support um, for libraries. It, it means a lot to me personally and to the community as a whole. Um, so I have a really, really exciting announcement, and that is that this Saturday, um, we 
Music for Autism will be back in person for our first in-person concert in three over oh, three years uh, since February. Uh, yeah, February 2020. Um, it's at the Brooklyn Heights Library again, um, and in its new space, it's a stunning space. It's an exciting concert. I put the information in the chat, um, or you can check out our website. I'll, I'll put that in the chat when I'm done to find out more information. But please do join us for this really exciting and fun and sensory friendly concert. Um, that being said, we also have uh, for adults. We have the um, a parent member training conducted by Include NYC, and that's on May 4th. And um, again, that's one of the best trainings on the IEP process that you will find. It focuses on the IEP meeting itself, and it is intended for people who want to become parent members, but anyone can come. Uh, and then we have some other things too. Uh, we have we are continuing with our arts and crafts from Keen, and um, also our on May 9th, our one to one assistance for people with um, questions about navigating disability systems for use. Um, and you can register with me to receive a phone call from a family educator from Include NYC on May 9th. And I'll put that information in the chat. And um, that's all I know today. So thanks all, and this was a really informative meeting. It's um, some good news and some bad news, and um, and I've written letters, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Thank Carrie, you. this is uh, Carrie. Just to let you clear, I have spoken to uh, elected officials who are on some of those committees. They are they're implored that that why our mayor wants to cut the libraries, especially his own borough. Which I'm going to say that we, uh, I have to say, in Brooklyn right now, a lot of the families I have seen have gone to their elected officials and has been brought this up right. to the community boards. Uh, Debbie, who just was here like half hour ago, want me to make that clear to you um, that we, uh, we, and and I think Brian, you agree that the libraries is a very important thing because why should we hear the word cuts in a library of all places? The libraries is the best place to go for people to learn <laughs> how to use the computers, you know, and have some time to relax too and meet their friends and maybe meet new friends. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm with you, Chris. Yes. I'm with you. Thank so, you. Uh, Brian, you want to add anything on that? No, I just agree. It should be supported, and it's it's a really important part of every community out there. Thanks. So, Carrie, y'all have made my day. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next is Sandy Neighbor, then Dolores Khan. Sandy. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone's having a good day. I have some very exciting webinars to announce from the DAP Community Network on Thursday, May 11th, 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. We're going to be presenting how to help children succeed in school through assistive technology. Our own Peter Pedoresi, director of the DAP's Community Network's Tech Works, will be presenting and also the assistive technology team from the New York City Department of Education will also be joining us. Also on Wednesday, May 24th from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., we'll be presenting Autism and Posture. Dr. Galia Zwick, physical therapist, will be our speaker. All webinars that we offer are free. Spanish and Mandarin interpretation will be provided and registration is required. If you'd like to register, please email familyconnect at adaptcommunitynetwork.org or call 718-436-7979, extension 704. Thanks everybody and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Sandy, there's a question uh, in the chat. I'm sorry, and I just just responding to it. Um, there is a question um, when they uh, can they call for translation or sign language? 
Can they still do that? They don't have to call for it. All they have to do is when they join the webinar, well, first of all, when they register, they're going to ask, they'll be asked if they need translation. So they'll have an opportunity to let us know if they need Mandarin or Spanish. And then when they log into the webinar, there'll be a little globe where they'll click on and they'll say, it'll ask them if they want to have Mandarin translation or Spanish translation. Thank you, Sandy, uh, about that, because that's the one thing that somebody's just saying thank you on that. Okay, let me move on. Dolores Khan. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Doris Khan. I am the Outreach Coordinator for New York State Institute on Disability. NICID provides the following services. We provide evaluations for individuals who do not have Medicaid for the purpose of obtaining OPWDD eligibility. If you live within Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, and Staten Island, you are eligible for this uh, free evaluation. The person to reach is Elizabeth Sunshine at 917-699 six four five seven or you can email Liz at e sunshine at nysidinc dot org. NYSID also provides crisis behavior management services for individuals who live in the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, and you can contact Juliet Hawkins at nine one seven five two four four eight five six or you can email J Hawkins at nysidinc.org. NYSID also Brian. provides reimbursement for goods and services for individuals who live in the five boroughs. You can contact Jackie Tripodi at 929-202-1115 or email her at jtripodi at nysidinc.org for more information. Now the weather is nicer. Uh, families have opportunities to go out on outings. NYSID provides tickets to different recreational venues for individuals who live in Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island. You can contact Sarah Alton, 718 718- Four nine four six four five seven, or email her s a l t o n at nicet inc um, dot org for additional information. If you're going on this outing, we also provide free transportation for individuals who live in the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Staten Island. Free transportation is also provided for medical appointments if you live within those three boroughs, Brooklyn, Bronx, and Staten Island. You can contact John O'Grady at 917-747-9424 or email him at jogrady at nicetinc.org. All the numbers and contact, all the contact information I put in the chat. Thank you very much. QSAC, this uh, 2023, can you uh, now please make your announcement, please? Okay. Oh, I do see. Okay, I guess that she must have left. Uh, at this moment, I'm going to ask Matthew from YAI. He has an announcement.
Matthew from YAI. Okay, I think he's having Wi-Fi issues, so I'll move on. Uh, does anyone else, before I mention names, uh, Michael from Care Design, do you want to announce what you just put in the chat? Okay, guys, I appreciate that the announcements are going into the chat, but I am going to remind you this is the time to announce your agency service openings because we do have parents still on as well as other uh, people here. It is nice. That's why it's recorded. So I am going to remind you for the last call. Does anyone want to make their announcements? This is not like the other boroughs. This is Brooklyn. We want to make sure everyone has a fair chance to announce their any very important services and anything. Uh, I do see Joe. Joe, are you back from um, Joe from FED? Are you still with us? Before I do anything, uh, Dolores, do you hear me? Okay. Hello. Oh, there we go. Hello. You, Joe? you asked to unmute me. Is there anything you need? Uh, Joe, where are you from? Is oh, this, uh... I'm in Senator Prasad's office. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Do you have something you want to add? Or oh, announce? I see. Yeah, because I did mention I did call your name uh, ten minutes ago when we had the time for any yeah, elected it official. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that. It's been a little hectic here in the office today. They, I've been told like three directions at once, but I've, I'm still here. I've been present to the meeting and listening to make sure I don't miss any notes because yeah. uh, the mm -hmm. senator likes to make sure that everything is orderly. So, and of course, the website, which helps too. How are you doing this morning? We're doing fine. Do you have anything you want to mention? This, uh, we're up to announcements. Uh, oh, announcements? Yeah. Um, Sure, there are some district events coming up. If there's mm -hmm. anything that is interesting for the people that are listening right now, this is the time. But I don't know. What? Oh, okay. This is Not the time to mention it. Absolutely. So thanks for having me. Uh, basically, every month at our district, we have what's called um, a recycling event. Uh, on May 21st, we have a paper shredding and e-waste recycling event coming up on May 21st. Um, the month after that, if you go to Canarsie Park, we have a safe disposal e-waste event. And then another e-waste event at our district office in July. In August 22nd, 2023, from 1 to 4 p.m., Tuesday, we have an, we have what's called the SD19 Fun Day Back to School Giveaway. And we also have coming up a Senior Resource Day on September 7th. And if anybody needs more details, I'll leave my email in the chat in case you want a, our district flyer or anything else. Does that make sense? It makes sense to us. Does anyone have any questions for Joe representing Roxanne Prasad? I uh, don't see anyone has any questions or sounds like we're in good shape. Okay, no problem. I'll leave the uh, email in case anybody wants a flyer sent to them and they could send the request to me directly since I'm the communications coordinator. Thank you so much, Joe. And it's great to hear from you and hope to see you on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> as well absolutely and, and, and just let everyone know his email is on the chat now please share that and always use that very important uh before i repeat this last time does anyone else have any announcements they'd like to add in i know that uh we have matthew who's here i know i see billy pat i see an iphone um, for well, the last time, I'm going to ask this, since no one else has an announcement or likes to put it in, some of you did, thank you. I'm going to remind everyone 
May is going to be a busy month. As you know, we're soon summer is around the corner. I'm going to remind everyone our next advisory council outreach update is May 3rd. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the topic is, I said, again, we are going to be on taking uh, some data driving uh, to talk about the future, improving public health, environmental living, community service, housing, jobs, and accessibility out, out coming for all Brooklyn nights. So this is the time to bring your questions I mentioned earlier uh, to bring it to that that day as well. So please remind sure you please attend that. Also, I'm going to remind everyone the next provider information committee on the DDN is May 10th. As I said before, we are talking about overview of Medicaid uh, as Rose and Deborah are co-chair of that committee. And as and transition is also on May 18th. So please make sure you attend this. All these meetings will be on our website as well as on our email. And please note, and this does not include last minute adjustment or a change of a date or a cancellation. So if a meeting gets canceled, we do not control that at short notice. Always check the day before if the meeting has been canceled or rescheduled. And a reminder, our next general meeting is May 24th. Starts at, we ask everyone to come in at 930 so we can start at 955. Always check your microphones and Wi-Fi and always check your computer when you're doing something Wi-Fi. On behalf of, since um, Brian had to run and, I, and I'm going to say on behalf of both councils today, I hope everyone please enjoy the weather we have. And always thank you for, com thank you for coming to the joint meeting of the Brooklyn Advisory Council and the Brooklyn Developmental Disabilities Council. And always please visit our website at www.efssac.com. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, Chris. Have a good day, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you.